Is someone in need of adventure? Shovel Knight? Come with me. Let's see what new adventures we can unearth. Right now? Mmm. Yep. That's me, as Shovel Knight in the release date trailer for Shovel Knight Dig. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Short answer, if you're already watching this video, you already know that Shovel Knight is one of my favorite games of all time. Everything Shovel Knight related, I am into it. Yacht Club Games has proven Shovel Knight is a malleable IP. Fluidly transitioning from a blisteringly tough retro platformer in the original Shovel Knight games to a totally unique falling block puzzle adventure in Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. And now, Yacht Club Games has taken the night into another genre. The roguelite in the Yacht Club Games and Nitrum co-developed Shovel Knight Dig. Hey everyone, and welcome back to an all new episode of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. Look, I love Shovel Knight. I've said it a billion times on this channel. Shovel Knight, like all the best things in life, always just happens to show up at a part of my life when something is going on. Seriously, it feels like whenever I'm going through something tragic or crazy difficult or I'm stressed out, Shovel Knight's there just to give me a big old hug and take care of me, you know? Keep stressing out Gerard. Got it. Wait, is that true? Do you guys keep releasing games based on how my stress levels and the things going on in my life, like, like my life is dependent on whenever you guys release brand new games? What? <laughs> Us? No, never. I've got my eye on you, Waz. I don't care what you say. We do not have a symbiotic relationship between my life and your guys' release schedule. Don't we, though? <sighs> okay, well, maybe. Yes! All glory goes to the winner! Hello, I am not Gerard. Hi there, Alex Fossiani, head of Patreon at TOVG. So as you know, Indieland 2022, our giant charity marathon indie game showcase, is happening live in Los Angeles in the Bourbon Room on November 11th through the 13th. Links in the description to buy tickets right now. But uh, they were saying something about a tattoo. Uh, I'm not sure I agreed to do that. Check it out. Just like always, you can get your very own monthly completion bonus at patreon.com slash the completionist for just $5 a month. And this month, it's all about IndieLand. So here's Michael Barrity, head of IndieLand at TOVG, to tell you what you get. Hi, Alex wrote my lines too. This month you will be getting Michael Barrity Presents IndieLand, an up-close look at this year's lineup. A bonus interview with Rick and Morty's Justin Roiland talking with me, Michael Barrity, about Squanch Games' new title, High on Life. And speaking about being high on life, if we raise $50,000 for dementia research, we're going to tattoo Gerard live on stream. Wait, what? Sign up now and add your indie game-themed image to the pile. One of Alex's ideas is Sans from Undertale crossing his arms with a beard. Hold on. I cannot get a tattoo. I didn't agree to this. Oh, psh. Don't worry. It's from Ephemeral Tattoo. It's totally a made-to-fade tattoo. How long does it last, Barity? A brisk 9 to 15 months, Alex. There, see? That's not so bad. Yeah, sure. Patreon.com slash The Completionist. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline! Oh, how I love the original Shovel Knight. Let me just count the ways. I love it for its commitment to old school aesthetics with modern techniques. I love it for its satisfying difficulty. I love it for the unbelievably amazing soundtrack. And I love it for helping me through an incredibly difficult time in my life. Shovel Knight is and will always be one of my absolute favorites. And yes, my new game plus video on Shovel Knight Treasure Trove is coming very, very soon. But we're not here to talk about Shovel Knight 
Today's video is about Shovel Knight Dig, which was born from a collaboration between two developers, Yacht Club Games and Nitrome. So time for a short history lesson for some of our younger viewers. Used to be an easy way to play free video games on your internet browser was through a bunch of websites. These sites hosted games built in a little program called Adobe Flash. Flash games were often simple but fun, with distinctive art styles and mechanics that were easy to learn but tough to master. If you're a certain age, like, you know, your bearded host here, you probably spent dozens or even hundreds of hours playing Flash games. Fancy Pants Adventures, This is the Only Level, essentially anything on Newgrounds. Way more fun than whipping batteries at a passing train. You know, like they used to do before the internet. Enter Nitrum. Nitrum was a major player in the browser game world in the 2010s. Nitrum has made over 100 games across multiple platforms. Over the last few years, they've expanded to making a couple of games for consoles. And that's right around where the partnership with Yacht Club Games came to fruition. Yacht Club Games wanted to do something a little bit different with their flagship IP, and the partnership with Nitrum seemed to be like a good match. Shovel Knight Dig takes lessons from browser-based and mobile games and blends them with Yacht Club's signature obsession with details. The result is a roguelite with the Shovel Knight sheen. If you've never heard of a roguelite because, hey, there's a first time for everything, maybe this is someone's first episode of The Completionist. Let me know in the comments down below. So let me explain explain briefly about a roguelite. Generally, roguelites are run-based games with randomly generated content with some permanent elements. The player can unlock upgrades that carry over into future runs, and there are often unlockable items or collectibles that the player can then purchase with in-game currency. They are meant to be replayed over and over and over and over and over and over again. And even when you die, the fun doesn't stop. Sometimes death is a part of the process. Shovel Knight Dig sets itself apart from other roguelites in a few distinct ways. Not uncommon, common but unique ways. For starters, players do not lose all their currency upon defeat, meaning that there is always a sense of progression. And to paraphrase my friend and composer extraordinaire, what he said, Shovel Knight moves left to right and Shovel Knight Dig goes down, down, down. The goal of Shovel Knight Dig is to make it through four distinct biomes, defeating enemies, collecting gems, clashing with bosses, and uncovering the mystery of Shovel Knight's first canonical adventure. That's right, this game is officially a prequel, as Yacht Club Games recently confirmed with a nifty little timeline, spelling out the order of the events in the Shovel Knight cinematic universe. The plot is simple enough. It begins with a straight up robbery. Our boy is having a little nap by a cozy fire when out of nowhere, out of freaking nowhere, a giant dude riding a big ass drill smashes into the ground, snatches Shovel Knight's sack, and drills down into the earth. Shovel Knight, concerned about getting that bag, big same buddy, big same, chases the mysterious Drill Knight. Further the knight descends into the pit, the more foes he finds. Shield Knight is here too, eager to provide support and figure out just what this mysterious band of robbers is up to. This is all the motivation I need to jump into a big hole. Once you dive, it's a fast paced race to defeat enemies and dig up as many gems as possible. Shovel Knight is always moving down, whether he's digging through terrain or shovel dropping to victory. There are secrets aplenty hidden off to the sides and only by thoroughly exploring side paths and skillfully defeating enemies can players make it through each level. But unlike some of the other Shovel Knight adventures, this game expects the player to die a lot. After losing all health, players have a choice, return to the surface or jump right back into another run. It's very clear this game is inspired by Downwell and Spelunky. Players must return to the surface frequently in order to complete this game. But this doesn't feel like a chore. The surface is packed full of NPCs, from returning favorites like Chester to new faces like the Hoofman. By interacting with these characters, the player can eventually unlock or purchase all the upgrades needed to fully complete this game. Just like other Shovel Knight properties, there is much to consider on the path to full completion. Dig may be pretty streamlined for a roguelite, it's certainly not packed full of pointless badges to grind for like Hades, or being updated endlessly like Dead Cells. Dead Cells, I love you, you don't need to keep going so hard. But there's still plenty here on the table. There are several pages in the in-game compendium with their own specific fulfillment requirements, and of course, the now infamous feats that are ingrained into everything Yacht Club games oriented. I've always loved roguelites, ever since the Binding of Isaac, despite the genre's tendency towards never-endingness. Because when you properly manage to synergize your power-ups and get that god-tier run, nothing is more satisfying. What has me intrigued about Shovel Knight Dig is that it feels purposefully limited in scope, kind of like Baby's first roguelite. But this also might be something that's ultimately a detriment to the overall experience. I'm also eager to see how Yacht Club Games brings their signature style to a whole new world. Fortunately, Shovel Knight Dig is just as easy to fall in love with as the original Shovel Knight, thanks to two major factors, music and art direction.
It might seem weird to talk about aesthetics before getting into gameplay and completion stuff, but Shovel Knight has always been so stylistically striking on every level that I wanted to dig right in. And yes, I did say dig, I get it. Shovel Knight and every campaign in the treasure trove is pixel perfect perfection. I've heard it said that Shovel Knight looks how people remember 8-bit games looking like from their childhood. Shovel Knight Dig looks different than its predecessors. Instead of a modern take on 8-bit pixel art, Shovel Knight Dig feels like it's out of the 16-bit era and it looks amazing. Call it extra pixels, call it whatever you like. Dig's sprites are beautiful. Every character from Shield Knight to Chester's big ass beetle, the Shovel Knight himself has gorgeous animations all throughout. One of the very first things that happens in Dig is being flipped upside down by Drill Knight, getting a horn stuck in the ground, and then freeing himself and brushing dirt off his shoulders. It's expressive, funny, and exciting. Swinging the shovel blade and jumping around has never looked as good for the knight as it does here. Every NPC on the surface level area hub is bursting with personality. Shovel Knight side characters have always been memorable, and in Dig, many returning folks get a glow up. Even old foes I've defeated a million times in other Shovel Knight games look fresh in Dig. Shoutouts to Tinker Knight and Mole Knight looking better than ever. Backgrounds on the surface level look amazing, and every new area that you descend to has an extremely distinct look. I think the lava biome looks particularly cool, and there are some really awesome flame effects that flare up all the time. The magic landfill is appropriately mysterious and exciting, with incredible stage hazards like portals that transport you from one side of the screen to the next. Now, there are six biomes total, and though completionists will definitely grow tired of seeing the same ones over and over again, they all look really amazing in their own way. If you're already a fan of Yacht Club Games' art direction, you'll love what Nitrum and Yacht Club do here. In a similar fashion, if you, like me, constantly have various Shovel Knight soundtracks playing on loop at any given time of day, you'll love what Jake Kaufman has to offer here. The soundtrack rules like everything Jake touches. It's super catchy and does a great job keeping players motivated to dig and dig and move quickly throughout every level. Although I have to say, I'm sort of shocked that there isn't some sort of music shuffler in Shovel Knight Dig. For the amount of times I ended up spent racing through the Mushroom Mines area, I really really, really would have loved some new background music after my 100th run. Now, this isn't a deal breaker by any means. Every track is still awesome. But the more and more I played Shovel Knight Dig, the more I realized that some design decisions were made without fully considering the scope of what a roguelite entails. As far as the art and general aesthetic of Shovel Knight Dig is concerned, I think the developers have done an admirable job of filtering a roguelite through a Shovel Knight lens. When it comes to the gameplay, I think that Shovel Knight Dig leaves a little something to be desired. Now look, I am probably one of the biggest Shovel Knight fans you'll ever meet. I love Shovel Knight with all my heart. This spin-off or side game or whatever you want to call it doesn't have quite the same impact as some of the other Shovel Knight entries. For roguelite fans, Shovel Knight Dig doesn't go far enough with its current gameplay idea. Now, to be clear, I think Dig is super fun and mostly hits the mark at what it wants to achieve. I think it's awesome that the core elements of Shovel Knight are here. Gem collecting, managing relics with limited uses, fun NPCs on display all over the place. Shovel Knight can even unlock techniques throughout the runs, including new techniques by either finding Master Argus and buying moves from him in the well, or just finding them from different vendors. I will say though, in order to unlock all of his moves, Master Argus has a tombstone in the main hub area that you have to interact with to then get little micro missions that would allow you to unlock more of these really cool moves. The action is fun and momentum is high in almost every single run. Shovel Knight Dig very much wears its influences on its sleeves, including some other popular indie titles. Dig takes a lot of inspiration from Devolver published Downwell. Even the primary layout of any given biome films right out of Downwell. Shops and secrets are off to the sides of screens, and the player is always trying to head downward as much as possible. Unlike Downwell, players have a lot more control over their motion. They don't have to only rely on gravity, they can jump and dig and figure out their own ways through screens. Relics also play a huge role in how players move through the world. Having a rising dagger or the shadow locket on hand is massive helpful if you don't want to fall into spikes or happen to fall past a valuable gem or golden cog. My favorite thing is that Shovel Knight Dig really leans into the shovel drop as a main mechanic. For like 90% of this game, the player is moving downwards. So how do the devs make that action interesting and exciting for dozens of hours and hundreds of runs? The shovel drop automatically activates with every jump, meaning that bouncing on enemies' heads is the norm. Digging through dirt is also still a major factor, perhaps even more major of a factor 
than it was in the previous games. It's really fun to land on a pile of dirt and see gems sparkling in different locations, and then having the player create an optimal path to snatch as much money as possible, and that feels tight. When I say dig moves quickly, I mean it. There may not be a clock literally ticking down in the corner, but players are under pressure on every single screen. If you take too long to move through an area, the Omega Saw shows up, which chews through everything you see on screen and one hit kills you if you aren't careful. Fortunately, the saw won't show up when you're exploring a secret side room or having a tasty meal made by gastronomal. All these mechanics work in concert to make Shovel Knight really work in the context of this particular genre. The foundation is very solid, and for some 20 odd hours, I was having a blast. Completing the in-game compendium is a challenge, but an enjoyable one at that. Finding all 27 accessories and all 12 relics is a naturally satisfying accomplishment. The Hoofman, everyone's favorite horse shopkeeper, is integral to this process, as he sells horseshoe-shaped keys on the surface that must be carefully transported through a biome until the player comes across a special relic door. After successfully unlocking that door, there is then a fun-themed challenge around a relic, and if a player makes it through, they have then unlocked the relic for future runs. Unlocking accessories is a little bit easier, but still requires dedication. Players can find Chester on the surface selling accessory unlocks for high prices. Once purchased, you can find them during a run. Every accessory is useful in its own way, and some of them are absolutely necessary to achieve certain feats. Once you find the armorer hidden in Tinker Knight's stage, you're able to find blueprints and unlock new armors for Shovel Knight. Finding all the blueprints and unlocking all 10 armors, however, is significantly more difficult than just purchasing them. Some armors bestow different unique properties on the player, and some of them are just flashy for the sake of being flashy, but it's always a nice change up for Shovel Knight's look. Now, unlocking all of these items takes thousands and thousands of gems total to get. It became crucial to vacuum up every gem I saw during a run, and I learned to spot where secrets were on screen in a split second very often. The telltale screw or slight crack in a wall was all I needed to smash it with my shovel blade and reap the rewards. Making bank has always felt good in every version of Shovel Knight, and Dig is no exception. Dying in a run is significantly less painful since I retained some gems every time, no matter how embarrassing the loss was. This meant that no matter what, I was always earning something that I could use to unlock something else. For the first few dozen runs, this was satisfying. But it's the runs themselves that start to chip away at what a Shovel Knight game should or shouldn't be. In Shovel of Hope and every campaign in Treasure Trove, level design feels paramount. Secrets are very intentionally placed, and memorizing stage layouts is incredibly important to maximize how many gems the player ends up with at the end of a stage. But in Shovel Knight Dig, RNG plays a very interesting role. Every time Shovel Knight jumps down into the hole, the player is in for a slightly different experience. They must be ready for anything, which is definitely exciting at first. I really enjoy learning the different hazards and obstacles in every stage. And it's clear that Yacht Club and Nitrum together had a ton of fun making every biome feel memorable. But after a few dozen runs, and especially after a few hundred runs, I just don't think that Shovel Knight doesn't quite fit this box the way that he's meant to. Runs don't feel distinct enough for the genre. Is Shovel Knight Dig a solid roguelite? Yeah, absolutely. Is it fun? 100%. Does it hit the heights in trying to achieve what it set out to do? On that front, I'm not so sure. I know, I know, I know, people think I'm a shill for Yacht Club Games or Nintendo or whatever company you think I'm a shill for. But anytime I approach completing a game that I've been anticipating for a very long time, I always try to take a big step back and look at what the game is trying to be. Does it have a focus towards a specific theme? Is it successful in the goals that it is attempting to achieve? Shovel Knight Dig, as great as it is on multiple levels, doesn't exactly fit on the same shelf as other games in its genre. When people think of roguelites, a few phrases spring to mind. Mind. Risk versus reward, breaking the game, creating your build. Shovel Knight Dig sort of avoids these concepts in favor of a more straightforward gameplay experience. I don't think this is necessarily a negative thing as a whole, but it did start to bother me the more of Dig I completed. This game is a perfectly competent roguelite until you start to really grapple with the design. This might sound strange to me, but Shovel Knight Dig is almost too balanced. Players can't really make interesting builds because there are only 30 or so items. 
options compared to the hundreds and hundreds of options in let's say the binding of isaac or dead cells or even hades you can only ever carry one relic and the accessories don't really lend themselves to the insane combinations available to other games in the space i know i've already done it a number of times already throughout this video today but i don't want to do the thing that often happens with indie games when they're compared directly with each other oh shovel knight dig is just like enter the gungeon but better in this way or it's like the binding of isaac but worse in that way and yet i can't help but feel as though in a lot of ways shovel knight dig feels a little too safe despite all the cool stuff that happens with the story and the expansion of what shovel knight can look like i wanted more and hey maybe i'm crazy it is entirely possible by which i mean yes obviously this is the case that some of these are nitpicks that only someone who has played as much shovel knight as i have will see shovel knight dig in its current form feels to me as though it's missing a few things that could make it truly great i was able to complete the compendium all 57 items beat the game and get its true ending which is a whole other can of worms in about 40 hours that means that i got all the relics accessories armors and all the shovel blade techniques were wrapped up and ready to go in a relatively short amount of time that doesn't get into completion which i'll get into but to me this is probably what the average player will do unless they decide to tackle all of the feats shovel knight dig at least as it stands right now lacks the resources and mechanics to be as replayable as it should be i fully get the shovel knight dig maybe some players ideal shovel knight experience right but as a long time fan of the series i feel as though this game lacks a level of polish that doesn't mean it isn't really good it is but it could be more it is far from bad but to me it is the weakest entry in the current shovel knight pantheon look that's not a dig at shovel knight dig Looking at Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, Shovel Knight Showdown, and even Pocket Dungeon, Shovel Knight Dig just looks inferior compared to those games. And that's because the high quality and standard they put into those games is just too damn high. With all that said, I have a lot of faith that this game will be expanded upon and that it will eventually end up as one of the greats. Yacht Club Games has even already announced something to that effect. A lot more is on the way. Its strengths are very pronounced. And when you pull out the magnifying glass, you will start to notice some of Shovel Knight Dig's flaws. And when you're going full completionist, this is particularly evident. When completing everything produced by Yacht Club Games, you have to eventually contend with the feats. These in-game achievements are meant to be the ultimate test of skill. In OG Shovel Knight, completing this list of feats quite literally helped calm me down in an emotionally fraught period of my life. Completing the feats in the Yacht Club produced Cyber Shadow helped me appreciate the craft that goes into calibrating an achievement. Getting every achievement in Pocket Dungeon really felt like it was adding to the gameplay. But completing Shovel Knight Dig was a mixed bag. I love how this game uses story telling and encourages everyone who plays this game to finish the story but the feats in dig makes completing it kind of nonsensical the story truly is fascinating and anyone who is brought into the world of shovel knight will find a lot to appreciate making it through several biomes to the final boss is a challenge but honestly it's doable within like 30 runs even if you're moderately skilled but like other roguelites shovel knight dig does hide a couple of secret endings for the hardcore on the surface you might notice this little adorable owl altius you can't pet the owl but you can also smack the owl with your shovel blade, causing him to fly around on the screen. If you're careful and time it right, you can spike Altius into the well, which unlocks the ability for players to start the true ending path. Once the owl is down in the depths, Shovel Knight can find a chest guarded by Altius, which leads to a conversation with Shield Knight and some other quests to complete along the way. Now, I won't spoil the true ending here, but I will say that I loved that I was forced to play through all six worlds in one run instead of the usual four. I was also forced to use items and keys in interesting ways that made me play completely different. This makes the experience feel way more epic and robust, a fitting challenge for someone who makes the effort to earn it. But this also shines a bit more light on my issues with completing Dig. I don't think that every feat in Dig is unreasonable, but I do think RNG sort of ruins much of the enjoyment of trying to achieve these feats. Some of them feel more like riddles to solve than challenges to overcome, which is fine, just not what I was hoping for. Now, take the shovel Knight economy feat, a throwback to the feat of the same name in previous Shovel Knight titles. In Dig, you might ask yourself, how am I supposed to finish a level and swing the shovel blade fewer than three times when I have to dig downward just to move on? The answer is simple. There is a cursed item that makes this instantly feasible. This is, again, not a bad thing by any means. I just didn't feel particularly skilled when I performed this feat, though I also had some trouble with the hurry up feat where I had to beat the game in under 25 minutes. Now, 
Now, it's not because I had trouble meeting that threshold because let's be honest, I got really great at this game and one of my best times is under 20 minutes. But currently, as of right now, the achievement itself is glitched. And that's the big issue with Shovel Knight Dig in its current form. Personally speaking, the only issues I ran into were related to feats, whether it be RNG, feats not unlocking, or even feats resetting once I've beaten them. But if you look online and you see what people are talking about when it comes to Shovel Knight Dig, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of documented glitches. Now, knowing Yacht Club games, I'm sure all of these are going to be patched out very, very soon. But this is definitely a hard thing for me to look at and not comment on. I think the other unsaid factor here comes down to the RNG issue. I hate to keep bringing up the feats, but there is a feat that requires you to not get a single piece of gold gems or anything on a single stage. This is incredibly difficult because almost every single stage requires you to dig down and there are almost always are guaranteed sections in which gems are forced to be in your way. This was not the intended way to get this achievement, but the way that I did this was I had to wait for the big saw to come down and then dodge the saw the entire time. This one hit kill saw is terrifying and there even is an achievement to dodge it for a minute. But getting that feat is easy because you kind of need to do that if you want to clear the stage without touching gold or gems. I think you guys get the picture here. Look, I was able to unlock pretty much everything in the game and beat the story by probably my 30th or 35th run. And yet completing this game took me around 40 hours. I generally don't think there's enough diversity in the gameplay loop to really justify completing the entire game. Finishing the story? Absolutely. Unlocking the entire compendium? A delight. But doing hundreds of runs in the hopes that the RNG systems line up in exactly the way that you need it to hit those feats? That's a rough one. I will say though, getting everything gives you 100%, but you don't get anything for it. It was a nice touch though that once you beat the game for the first run, the normal ending, there is a silver statue in the main area, implying that if you get the true ending, it turns into gold. And sure enough, I was right. At the end of the day, Shovel Knight Dig in its current form is a wonderful game that has, unfortunately, a lot of bugs. None that will drive you crazy or be unfair or ruin the entire experience. But take that and couple with the weird RNG issues and the lack of being able to create a game-breaking build or collect items that really synergize with one another. This is a game that, in a a few months time could be one of the greatest roguelites ever made. As of right now, it's a pretty great title. As with our Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon video, I want to be clear, I can't really give this game an unbiased rating on my completionist scale. Uh, having a personal relationship with the developers at Yacht Club Games means my opinions are definitely colored when it comes to Shovel Knight. I mean, for God's sakes, I am 90 Shovel Knight going forward, essentially. Yacht Club Games have become uh, emotionally connected to my psyche, and I don't think it's a bad thing, necessarily. All disclaimers aside, however, I love playing this game. The foundations of Shovel Knight Dig are very solid, but I think its longevity is a little lacking. Maybe future updates, DLC, or additional content or modes will bulk up what Nitrum and Yacht Club have done here. In which case, hey, great, I love it. I obviously recommend finishing this game for the story, and the fact that there is a leadership board means that this game will hopefully form a thriving community as time goes on. Thank you, Yacht Club Games, for letting me be a part of Shovel Knight Dig's history, and thank you to all for watching. See you next week. Bye.